This is why I've always enjoyed cut-ups. What once seemed familiar can quickly become disturbing or comic or strangely beautiful. In the late 1950s, the American writer William S. Burroughs began experimenting with a relatively new gadget, the home tape recorder. The concept of cutting up recorded speech now began to take on a life of its own. And it was William Burroughs who gave it a name and a voice. Busily lashing together the manuscript of his breakthrough novel, Naked Lunch, in the room below Geissen's, Burroughs saw in the cut-up a weapon with which to attack the conventional logic of narrative and perception, blurring the boundaries between reality and illusion. Here is Burroughs describing this new method at a public lecture in 1976. Now, the first tape recorder cut-ups were a simple extension of cut-ups on paper. There are many ways of doing these, but here's one way. You record, say, 10 minutes on the recorder. Then you spin the reel backwards or forwards, just like that, without recording. Stop at random and cut in a phrase. Now, of course, when you've cut in that phrase, you've wiped out what's ever there, and you have a new juxtaposition. In the 1980s, the cut-up shifted location and soon became available to everyone. Recorded speech readily lent itself to manipulation by an emerging generation of DJs and dance music producers. Hip-hop, house and techno all found a place in their beats for cut-up text. Cassette boy, cassette boy, cassette boy, cassette boy. Well, Cassette Boy started with the two of us making compilation tapes for our friends. Cut-up satirists Cassette Boy started out exactly where their name implies. We would record a bit of music and then a bit of speech and then a bit more music. The key to all of this is affordability and access. It isn't actually to do with anything high art. It's to do with just normal people trying to make things. The wonderful thing about the cut-up, much like the collage, is anyone can do it.